I was in the hood, man. I grew up in the hood. And once my mother and father got divorced, you know, you know, as a kid, you, you, you were at 57. Marvin Sapp has decided to reveal something people have long suspected. Why did he keep the secret for so long? And uh, that's when I made a decision to really, really commit my life to who I was singing about. And what does it mean now that he's finally telling the truth? Let's dive into Marvin's surprising confession. Oh, you know, I grew up in the city, but I grew up in the inner city, of course. And, um, you know, grew up to it. Marvin Sapp was born on January 28th, 1967 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He grew up in a religious family and his love for music started early. His mother was a gospel singer and she encouraged him to join the church choir. This helped him develop a passion for music that would shape his future career. Marvin was raised in a Christian home with strong spiritual values. But like many kids, he faced challenges. And, um, you know, grew up to a divorced mom and, 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 you know, who divorced my mom. My dad divorced my mom when I was very, very young. And, you know, even though they made sure that I was in church, you know, church wasn't necessarily in me. You know, I got in a lot of trouble, did a lot of things that I shouldn't have done, just like. He grew up in a tough neighborhood and had to deal with peer pressure and the temptation to stray from his faith. Despite these struggles, Marvin stayed close to his family and church, which helped him stay grounded and true to his beliefs. Then one day, a major transformation took place in my life. And, and uh, you know, the rest is really more or less. After finishing high school, Marvin went to Annan Bible College. Even though it wasn't well known, he studied theology, which is the study of religion. During his time there, he also joined a gospel group called Commissioned. This was a big step in his music career, as it gave him a chance to practice his singing and build a reputation in the gospel music world. Higher. And uh, I've been, yeah, I've been singing for 50 years. 50, yeah, 50 years. So, you know, and never wow. sung, check this out, never sung anything but gospel. In 1996, Marvin decided to go solo and became a contemporary gospel artist. He released his own albums and found success over the years. One of his biggest moments came with his album, Thirsty. The album had a song called Never Would Have Made It, which became a huge hit. It reached number 14 on the U.S. Billboard Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs Chart and number one on the Billboard Hot Gospel Songs Chart. The album itself did very well, debuting at number 28 on the Billboard 200. It sold over 500,000 copies and even got a gold certification. Marvin's success didn't stop there. He released another album, Here I Am. This album made history, debuting at number two on the Billboard 200 chart it was the highest charting album by a gospel artist in Billboard's 54-year history. The album's first song, The Best in Me, was also a hit, reaching number one on the Billboard Gospel Songs chart. Because of his success, Marvin won many awards, including seven stellar gospel music awards in 2009. He became a well-known name in gospel music. Marvin also worked with other famous gospel artists like Kirk Franklin, Donnie McClurkin, and Yolanda Adams. These collaborations helped him grow as an artist and made him a key figure in the gospel music world. Yeah. But at 12, I read you, you smoked weed for the first time. Yeah. Uh, did pills at 15. Yes, 15. Snorted a line of cloak, snorted a line of coke at 18. Yeah. W where did this come from? If you've been in the church singing since- Sapp's journey to success has not been easy. In fact, he recently shared that his life has been full of struggles, including a past filled with drugs and alcohol. Despite being dedicated to the church, Marvin's story is not one of perfection. When Marvin was just a kid, his parents got divorced. This is when he began to make some choices that led him down a difficult path. At the age of 12, he started smoking marijuana every day. By the time he was 16, he was drinking alcohol and using pills. And at 18, he tried cocaine for the first time. Marvin says he had a tough time growing up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He even admitted that he rebelled as a teenager and went through major struggles. Sadly, many of the friends Marvin used to hang out with didn't make it out of that rough lifestyle. He shared that out of the five friends he used to party with, all of them have had bad endings. One friend became an alcoholic. Another is still struggling with crack addiction. One is serving a 27-year prison sentence for murder. And another friend passed away about 15 years ago due to drugs. Despite his troubled past, Marvin's faith and love for gospel music helped turn his life around. 
but he is quick to remind people that just because he sings in church doesn't mean he was perfect. He says that growing up, his mother made him go to church, but just attending church doesn't mean the church was inside him. Marvin wants people to understand that everyone is flawed, even people who seem perfect. He doesn't want anyone to think he is someone who walks around with a halo because he has made mistakes too. Marvin has had his share of controversies. Even though Marvin is known as a devout and faithful man, a few incidents have put a shadow over his public image. One of the biggest controversies happened in 2013 and involved a woman named Dr. Telica Patrick, a medical resident who became obsessed with Marvin. First tonight, a Kalamazoo doctor missing for nearly a month. Now Target A is uncovering shocking developments and alleged obsession with Grand Rapids gospel star Marvin Sapp. Dr. Patrick's story started when she began stalking Marvin Sapp. She believed she had a personal connection with him, even though there was no evidence to support this. She sent him many messages, tried to join his church, and even expressed her feelings on social media platforms like Twitter and YouTube. She said things like wanting to have children with him, even though Marvin never encouraged this behavior. Sap. Last night in an exclusive interview, Talika Patrick's ex-husband in California told us he was concerned that she had mental health issues and she may be in danger. Tonight, this connection to Sap is only adding to that. Con the situation became even more serious when Dr. Patrick showed up at Marvin's home. She spoke to his three teenage children, which made Marvin very uncomfortable. On August 25, 2013, during a church service, Marvin spoke out about an unnamed woman who had invaded his privacy. Later, it was revealed that this woman was Dr. Patrick. She had been contacting Marvin for over a year, visiting his home, and claiming to be his spouse. This caused Marvin to take legal action to protect himself and his family. He filed for a restraining order against Dr. Patrick, asking the court to stop her from contacting him and his children. He presented over 400 pages of evidence, showing how persistent and unwanted her actions had been. The court granted Marvin's request, and Dr. Patrick was ordered to stay away from him and his family. However, Dr. Patrick's obsession with Marvin did not end there. She disappeared under mysterious circumstances later in 2013, which brought even more attention to the case. Marvin was not directly involved in her disappearance, but the whole situation still affected his public image. Marvin Sapp makes some serious allegations, allegations of stalking, contacting his kids, and more than 400 pages, he said, worth of... The situation took a darker turn when Dr. Telica Patrick's abandoned car was found. Inside the car were her personal items, including a Bible and some cash. This was a strange and unsettling discovery, which led to months of worry and confusion. Eventually, Dr. Patrick's body was found in a lake in Indiana. Her death was ruled an accident, but the mystery around her disappearance and the way she had been obsessed with Marvin Sapp continued to attract attention from the media. For Marvin Sapp, this was a very stressful and upsetting time. Even though he had no involvement in her disappearance or death, the media attention put him in the spotlight. Many people began to speculate and gossip about his connection to Dr. Patrick adding stress to an already difficult situation. Marvin Sapp publicly expressed his sadness for Dr. Patrick's family and made it clear that he did not have any personal relationship with her. Let's live together. When I found out she went to Michigan, you gotta ask yourself, why did she go to Michigan? Before she- Unfortunately, this wasn't the only time Marvin Sapp faced rumors. As a famous gospel singer and pastor, his personal life often became the subject of gossip. People talked about possible affairs and relationships outside of his marriage. However, there has never been any solid proof of these rumors, and Marvin Sapp has always denied them. These rumors have affected his reputation. As a public figure, even false claims can change the way people see him. Marvin has tried to handle the rumors by staying calm and not responding directly to the gossip. Instead, he focused on his music and ministry, letting his work speak for itself during this challenging time. I couldn't even fall asleep. Marvin's personal life has also been filled with heartache. One of the hardest moments in his life was losing his wife. He married his childhood sweetheart, Melinda Prince, in 1992. They had three children together, but in 2010, 
Melinda was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer and passed away. Melinda was not only his wife, but also his manager and a key part of his ministry. Her death was a huge loss for Marvin, both personally and professionally. He has often shared how difficult it was to continue his work without her by his side. This loss took a toll on Marvin, but he didn't give up. Instead, he used his faith to help him heal and keep moving forward. After Melinda's death, Marvin became a single father to their three children, Marvin Jr., Michaela, and Madison. This change in his life was difficult for Marvin, as he had to take on both the roles of a loving father and a busy career man. Before Melinda passed away, the couple had balanced their family life with his demanding career. But after her passing, Marvin had to figure out how to handle everything on his own. He chose to focus on his children's well-being, putting their needs first over his own. One of the hardest parts was raising his daughters. He realized he needed to be more nurturing and sensitive, something he hadn't fully experienced before. As a parent, he had always taught them certain values, but now he had to learn how to be there for them in a way that helped them through their own emotional struggles. If his daughters made decisions that went against what he had taught them, he had to be open and honest enough to talk it out with them. Even though it was difficult, he knew it was important to listen and be there for them. As time went on, he found a balance in his new life. Being a parent and working professionally was tough at first, but he learned how to blend his work with parenting. He would talk to his children about his music, just like he had once done with Melinda. This open way of communicating allowed for honest conversations, and it helped him feel connected to his children in a deeper way. Hey, Stevenson. Maddie. <laughs> For him, fatherhood became one of his greatest accomplishments. He said that being a father gave him strength, especially as he worked through his grief. His children's love and presence were a huge support for him during this tough time. They gave him a reason to keep moving forward and find a new sense of purpose. Melinda's legacy lives on through the K-12 Charter School, which her husband co-founded. This school became a special way for him to honor her memory and contribute to the community. On top of dealing with the loss of his wife, Marvin has also faced health challenges. He has been open about his struggle with diabetes, a condition that has required him to make significant changes to his lifestyle. Despite these health challenges, Marvin's faith and determination have helped him manage his condition. His strength in facing these hardships shows his commitment to taking care of himself and continuing to serve both his church and music career. My dad was in the male chorus and he used to sing a song uh, called Just a Closer Walk With Thee. Sap opens up about his relationship with his father, who was a big influence on him. Marvin looked up to his dad, who was a wonderful singer, and that's one of the reasons Marvin began singing too. Even though his parents were no longer together, his father stayed close by, having a business just down the street. This allowed Marvin to grow up with a strong male role model who taught him right from wrong and encouraged him to be a leader. Sunday, um, my dad sang his solo and after hearing it so many times, uh, you know, I knew the words. So one Sunday morning while he was singing it, I decided to walk down there and stand next to him. And uh, he ended up putting a mic in my, my, my face and you know, I ended up singing the words on perfect pitch. One of Marvin's biggest hits, never would have made it, came from the grief he felt after his father died. His wife encouraged him to record the song, and he's thankful that he listened to her because it became a huge success. Now the song's impact is so big that there's a whole movie about it. Marvin Sapp shares that while prayer is essential, it's also crucial to talk to someone trained to help, or especially during hard times. He believes that finding people who understand what you're going through, such as counselors, can make a big difference. Marvin tells people that grief never completely goes away, but you learn to manage it. Some days are hard and some days are better. What matters is that you know how to handle it when it comes back. Reflecting on his famous song, Marvin explains that the lyrics were his true thoughts to God after losing his dad. He was overwhelmed with pain and didn't know how he'd keep going. But with God's help, he knew he'd come out stronger, wiser, and better. Those simple words in the song spoke to so many people, and it has become a message of hope for all who hear it. Marvin Sapp's rise to fame can be credited to his incredible talent, deep connection with his audience, 
and strong faith. Known for his powerful voice and meaningful lyrics, Marvin's music often reflects his personal experiences, offering messages of hope, strength, and faith in times of hardship. His music is not just entertainment. It's a way for people to connect with their own struggles and find comfort. This honest and relatable approach has helped him build a loyal fan base around the world. In addition to his music career, Marvin Sapp is also a pastor. He founded the Lighthouse Full Life Center Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where he serves as the senior pastor. This role allows him to share his faith and connect with people in a spiritual way. By balancing his work as a musician and pastor, Marvin reaches people in many different ways, whether through his uplifting songs or his heartfelt sermons. Sapp has managed to stay out of scandals for over 30 years. In a recent interview on DJ Vlad's Vlad TV, Sapp talked about how he has avoided trouble and kept his career clean for so long. He was open about the struggles he faced. When asked about staying out of scandals, Marvin Sapp was honest. He said, I'll say this without question. I'm not perfect, not even close. He admitted that he has his own struggles, bad habits, and challenges. Every day he faces things that could lead him into trouble. But despite these challenges, he has managed to stay on track. He believes that when you achieve success, you are held to a higher standard. He said, to whom much is given, much more is expected. Sapp also talked about how his success has changed his life. Because he has done well in his career, he has more financial stability than many others. However, he made it clear that money is not what keeps him on the right path. It's not all about money for me, he explained. His main motivation comes from his faith. Sapp believes that his relationship with God plays a big part in keeping him grounded. He fears God, and this fear helps him stay focused and avoid mistakes. He also pointed out that in his line of work, one wrong move can ruin everything. In ministry, you are one mistake away from destroying your entire career, he said. That's why he makes sure to be careful about his actions and decisions. For Sapp, it's not just about money. It's about keeping his career and reputation intact. Marvin Sapp also explained that discipline is key to living the life he enjoys. He knows that he has to be disciplined both in public and in private. It's not just about what people see, it's about how he lives behind closed doors. As a father of three, he said his disciplined lifestyle has helped him avoid drama and trouble. The challenges he faces are not because of reckless behavior, but because he takes responsibility for his actions. Sapp is aware that many people look up to him, especially for spiritual guidance. He takes this responsibility seriously and knows that his actions can influence others. He hopes his life can inspire people in the Christian community and show them that they don't have to act in dramatic or immoral ways to get attention. He is frustrated by how the media often shows people, including Christians, in a negative light. He believes that positive behavior should be the example, not scandalous behavior. I am not raising no disrespectful, drugged out alcoholic. You need to become more of a leader, son. Marvin's story has now been turned into a movie called Never Would Have Made It, the Marvin Sapp story. Chaz Lamar Shepard plays the role of Sapp in the film. According to Sapp, he didn't look for this opportunity. It came to him. He shared with Essence that people found his story interesting, especially since he has been through many hard times and still managed to reach success. He believes that sharing his story might help others who are also going through tough times. Sapp explains that his life has not been easy. As a young man, he went through painful and traumatic experiences, but he thinks his story can help people see that even if life is hard, there is always hope to make it through. He believes everyone has never would have made it moments, times when they felt they couldn't go on, but found strength to push forward. This is why he felt it was important to make this film. He wants people to know they're not alone and that they too can overcome their struggles. But in making this film, Sapp had to be very open about his past. This can be difficult because sharing personal stories means being honest about the good and the bad. In today's world, people are quick to judge, so it's hard to know what to share and what to keep private. Sapp says he tried to be translucent rather than fully transparent. By this, he means that he shared parts of his life that could help people without revealing everything. He thinks it's essential to show enough of the truth to make his story helpful, but he also needs to keep some things private. He shared struggles like addiction and a serious illness he was diagnosed with, but he didn't share every detail 
because he needs to stay focused on his primary role, which is preaching the gospel. Creating this movie has been a humbling experience for Sap. The chance to work with TV One and Swirl Films to tell his story is something he deeply appreciates. He was involved in the process, from picking the actors to working on the production. He feels grateful for the opportunity and does not take it for granted. Sap hopes that Never Would Have Made It will leave a lasting impact and inspire others to keep going, no matter how tough life gets. Marvin hopes that people who watch the movie Never Would Have Made It will be encouraged by three main ideas. First, he wants parents to know that even if their child seems far from God, there's still hope. Second, he wants people to remember that God can heal, even when the situation looks hopeless. And third, even if God doesn't answer prayers the way we want, he can give us the strength to get through it. Recently, Sapp spoke on being single. Marvin says that after being single for 12 years, he is now ready to get married again. He believes he is a better man when he is married. Marvin also shared that his children are growing up quickly. His son just got engaged, his daughter has a boyfriend, and his youngest daughter also has a special someone in her life. Marvin says he doesn't want to be left out, and he's hoping to find someone to share his life with, so they can all be booed up together. Marvin Sapp hopes his life story will show that even when things seem impossible, it's possible to find strength and make it through. This is the legacy he wants to leave, a message that no matter the challenges, anyone can rise and make it through.